Hello, my name is Rowan and I'm Cloud Accounting Manager here at PJCO. We specialise in QuickBooks Online and integrated apps that automate the bookkeeping process and make managing and growing your business easier. We're proud to have four of the top 10 QuickBooks Online advisors in the UK by client rating. Check out my reviews and get in contact using the link to my profile found below. In this online training video, we're going to show you how to allocate transactions within Receipt Bank to publish through to your QuickBooks Online account. So whenever you send items to Receipt Bank, they're going to appear here in your Receipt Bank inbox. Some elements of the data will be extracted from the item automatically by Receipt Bank, but not everything. So all of the items that you send through should be checked to make sure the correct information is going to be pushed through to QuickBooks. The first thing to look out for on inbox items are any notes. So they're just found here and there'll be a little message icon. So Receipt Bank will leave a note whenever there's something important that the user should be made aware of. The most common note is one for a missing date as is the case on this item from Sainsbury's. So this happens where Receipt Bank has not been able to read a date on the item. So they've instead used the submission date which could have been different from the actual date. So this sometimes happens where a photo is blurry or as in this case where the upload is only part of the original document and the other part has the date on. So if I click into this item, you can see this is the receipt that's been uploaded. And actually the part with the date on was on the reverse side of that receipt. So Receipt Bank has therefore not been able to pick up a date. If the photo is blurry, you should retake a photo of the original document or if the photo is okay but Receipt Bank has read the date wrong then you can amend this without having to take another photo so you can just amend it here by overtyping this date column. If part of the document was missing from the upload then you should redo it so that it includes all elements so you would remove this one and re-upload as I have done for this item with the note on. So I can now click on this one here and just delete this out because we no longer need it. Now once you've dealt with all of the items with notes, you can move on to checking items by clicking on the blue hyperlink under the type field here. And we'll start by looking at this one from Gatwick Hotel. Clicking on the hyperlink will bring up an image of the item, as we've got here, alongside category fields to be applied under four headings, the first of which is our receipt details heading. So usually Receipt Bank will pick up details in this section correctly, automatically, but sometimes this is not the case. As we've already discussed, the date may be incomplete, but it could also be incorrect if Receipt Bank has read the date wrong. So again, you should check this. In this case, it looks like the date has been picked up fine. In addition, the due date might not also be picked up, um, but this can be changed manually by overtyping this due date here or it can be changed through using the supplier rules which we'll get onto shortly. If you've not set up a supplier in QuickBooks for the item, Receipt Bank will tell QuickBooks to create a new one using the name it's picked up from this item. So in this case, a new supplier would be created for Gatwick Hotel Limited. Sometimes, even if the supplier looks correct, 
it may not correlate to the supplier that's used in QuickBooks due to a slight difference in the name presented on the invoice, which has been picked up by a receipt bank. When this happens, the best thing to do is to leave it as receipt bank has picked it up, unless this is clearly wrong. And then what you're going to do is once you've published the item through to QuickBooks, you can merge the suppliers within QuickBooks and keep the one which is recognized in Receipt Bank. And this will pre prevent the duplication of any suppliers going forward. So you won't end up with two different accounts for the same thing. So finally in this section, we can set up supplier rules so that all further items for this supplier are categorized automatically according to the rules we set. So here we only want to set up rules for fields that are not likely to change. So in this case, we might set the category as traveling and subsistence as it's for a hotel. And then any further invoices we receive from Gatwick Hotel would go straight to this category. We can also specify a tax rate as we know that they're standard rated, although Receipt Bank does pick this up automatically. And if the payment terms were, say, 14 days, we could change this so that it was 14 days after the invoice date. You've also got a few different other options here to choose from as well. You might not necessarily put a payment method in because this would mean that you would always use the same payment method um, for this supplier. And again, the publish to field might change depending on whether the item is an invoice or whether you're getting a receipt from the supplier. So we're happy with that now. And what we're going to do is move on to the amount section. So receipt banks should extract the total and tax amounts correctly. And even where the item contains a mixture of standard rated and zero rated items, it will only extract the tax which you can reclaim. But in any case, you should check these just to make sure that there aren't any errors. If suppliers rules have been used, uh, then the category should be appearing automatically which it is down here. We've set that as traveling and subsistence. But if this is not correct, you can always click here on this category field and this will show all of the expense and cost of uh, goods sold categories that we've set up to pull through in the setup. If you're tracking expenses against customers, classes, or locations within QuickBooks, these fields can be entered here under the headings Client for Customers, Project for Classes, and Project 2 for Locations. You've also got Description field here, but really there's not much need to enter a description as all of the information that you need is part of the item which has been sent to Receipt Bank and that will travel through to QuickBooks as well. Moving on to the payments section, it's very important that this is filled in correctly as it could otherwise cause your payables report or bank account to be out within QuickBooks. So going through these different fields, the paid field here really is for reference only. It doesn't really impact how the item appears in QuickBooks. It's just for your understanding of the item. The payment methods field lists the last four digits of all payment cards that Receipt Bank has recognized. So if a new payment method is recognized, then when it's selected, so let's choose this new one here, this will appear with a broken link. So hovering over that link, 
it tells us that the selected payment method is not actually linked to a bank account within QuickBooks. So that means that if we choose that as a payment method, we won't be able to publish the item through to QuickBooks because there's nothing to put it against. Payment methods can be linked in the payment methods section, which is found under maintain lists within your account settings. All purchase invoices where the supplier has given credit terms or a period of time to pay should be set to paid no, the payment method should be left blank and the published to should be a bill. Even if the invoice has now been paid, we want QuickBooks to reflect the situation at the time of the invoice as opposed to the time that we're processing this through Receipt Bank. Only where the invoice was paid immediately at the time of purchase should a payment method be attached with a published to being credit card instead of bill which for receipt bank purposes also means debit card. All receipts for items paid using a business debit card or credit card should be set to paid yes and the payment method should be associated with that. So we've got the debit card there and then the publish to field should be credit card. So I'm just going to go change that back because it's a, an invoice. So we want that to go through as a bill. Now all receipts for items paid using a personal debit or credit card should be set to paid no with no payment method associated and the published to should be bill. These will then be added to an expense report within Receipt Bank for the employee or director that purchased them. Lastly, the line items section can be used where you need to separate items purchased in the same invoice or receipt into different categories. To do this, all you need to do is click edit line items and add a new line. And here you can add in the new line items as required and put them to the appropriate categories. Once you've allocated items following the process that we've just gone through, you can either publish by hitting the green button down here, or you can choose to add to our expense reports for items that were paid using a personal debit or credit card. So in this case, I'm now happy that this item has been categorized correctly, and I'm just going to click publish, and that will be queued for publishing to go through to QuickBooks Online.